Let's explore what happens when a narcissist realizes they're not getting what they want. Picture a narcissist, initially innocent like a baby, soaking up all the attention and praise as they grow into adults with massive egos. When things don't go their way, brace yourself. To them, it's a personal affront. This isn't about minor disagreements, it's about anything that threatens their control, like setting boundaries or expressing your own views. Prepare to navigate the maze of their selfish behavior. For someone with an inflated ego, anger feels like a punch to the gut. They struggle to cope, plunging into unprecedented levels of stress and anxiety. It's like walking a tightrope between their usual self and something far more volatile. Under stress, anxiety, or frustration, narcissists behave similarly to those with borderline personality disorder. They might throw tantrums, react intensely, and grapple with emotions like anger and envy. For an ego, frustration makes things worse. In the worst cases, it can push them into primary psychopathy, which is different from secondary psychopathy that is common in people with borderline personality disorder. People with borderline personality traits and narcissists both have a hard time controlling their anger and often do harmful things to cope. The deal is that a mentally healthy person might stand up for themselves to deal with a problem when they are angry. Narcissists, on the other hand, see things very differently. They often have outbursts in public, using angry words or even physical force. This is called a forceful snap. Their goal is to get other people to do what they want, which means changing reality to fit their vision. The narcissist wants to be in charge, so any pushback or attempt to stand up for yourself can lead to violence. It is important to understand that narcissists see anger as an internal fight and often don't pay attention to outside influences. People and things are just extensions of their thoughts to them. They only live in their minds. So, when they are upset, they think it is because of a problem inside themselves instead of an effect of something outside of them. When they are upset, they act aggressively to ease their own discomfort by making others follow their imagined reality. People who are narcissists don't see others as real people. Instead, they see them as characters in their own story who only live in their minds. Because of this, when they're angry, it's not because of real acts, but because of how they think other people are making them feel bad. It doesn't help to walk away because people keep using their thinking space. They will stay angry and irritated until they can give up their mental models or use violence to gain control. Narcissists can change a lot about themselves when things get bad, kind of like changing a switch. When they are in this mode, they act without thinking, cause damage, and have erratic reactions that are almost irrational. These events, which are sometimes called a borderline rage, are different from the usual angry outbursts that come with narcissism. At first, when a narcissist acts cold and calculating, they might seem like the typical movie villain only concerned with their evil plans and not caring about the people they hurt. On the other hand, they have another side to them that makes them charming and perfect partners. They are warm and friendly. But be careful, below this surface lies an evil that is ready to show what it really is. Although they act kind and polite, it's just a mask to hide how they really feel. Let's talk about something real. Sometimes, People who seem completely normal on the outside have bad goals on the inside. They might put on a smile while planning behind your back ways to mess up your life, like spreading rumors or hurting your job. The effects of what they do can be very bad, making you feel very uneasy. Let's talk more about the idea of a G borderline state. Think of it as two different forms of the same person. The first is like a raging volcano that suddenly erupts with temper tantrums or fits of anger. This is typical narcissist behavior. The second form is more sneaky, like a slow burn, where they slowly cause trouble and then put the blame on you. Covert narcissists who are good at playing mind games with others like to use this strategy. When things go wrong, narcissists can basically change into an unstable state. 
the overt type explodes like a fireworks display, while the hidden type plans and schemes behind closed doors. People with big egos may sometimes feel slighted or think they've been wronged, which makes them come up with plans to get back at people they think are wronging them. They are very good at hiding their true intentions by putting on an innocent front until the right time to strike. This is like a fight between two opposing groups. These people are very good at avoiding responsibility by telling themselves that their violent actions are okay. For them, winning is everything, and losing can send them down a downward slope that leads to depression, drinking too much, or even losing touch with reality. Now, let's look at this more closely. Some people can act in scary ways, especially around people they know. They might start with insults and then move on to actual violence, treating others like things instead of people. If they are paranoid or angry, you should be careful around them because they might start watching or bothering people they think are enemies. Let's talk about getting payback now. When someone hurts us, we have a natural urge to get back at them. Some see it as a way to make things fair again. But their goal isn't just to punish people. They also want to make the victim feel safe again and make sure the bad person has to deal with the effects. It has to do with regaining balance and rightness. Getting revenge, on the other hand, is hard because it can turn into an all-consuming fixation or passion that won't go away. If you don't do anything about it, it can turn into a personal grudge that leads to hurting yourself or others. It's like putting all of your time and effort into something that makes you feel bad and might even drive you crazy. Now let's talk about narcissistic payback, which is a whole other league. For narcissists, getting payback is a way to boost their fragile ego and deal with feelings of shame or disrespect. No matter what part they played in starting the fight, they see themselves as victims. It's like they need to show control to feel good about themselves like they're on a power trip. As narcissists see themselves as perfect and invincible, they change when they are embarrassed or challenged in their authority. They go into revenge mode. By punishing those they think are to blame, they try to regain their sense of control and power, and they want to get back to thinking of themselves as godlike. If you start to think about getting back at someone, it's important to stop and think about it. Ask yourself, what is making you want to do this? Are you trying to protect your honor, or are you just trying to please your own ego? It is very important to tell the difference between people who are motivated by a desire for fairness and those who are motivated by self-interest. Do you tend to be fair and practical, or do you get irritated by small things and feeling good about yourself? It's a fine line, but being clear about your goals can change everything. At the end of the day, some people want to be made whole again after someone else's actions hurt them, while others want payback because they think they are right. It all comes down to the path you choose.